OK, uh, I, I'm back again. Uh, this is going to be just a quick update, and it's going to be part eight, I think, of me of me Magneto Rewind. Uh, this particular part, I'm going to split into two se sections. One's showing you my armature, which has now been vacuum impregnated. And then I'm going to show you another little part after this. Um, on my actual coil winding fixture in my Marford lathe. I'm going to explain all the sizes to you and the dimensions and give you a rough idea in case anybody were interested and wanted to do it. So, first of all, it's me impregnated armature. Uh, my last video I've shown you making me, me vacuum chamber. Now, I've managed to use this vacuum chamber successfully. And I don't know if you can see my armature now. This is the finished product after all that work. And I'll just explain briefly what I've done. First of all, I uh, I soldered this um, transfer wire on to my secondary winding. Now that starts round here and it transfers on a multi-core wire up to this point eight of a eight of a mil wire that's going to go into my slip ring. Now all that's impregnated now and what I did I used this anti-tracking varnish first I put plenty of that on it it's a bit bit of a messy job but what I did I put plenty on with, with a big brush as quick as I could made sure it was getting all, all nooks and crannies and then in my vacuum chamber to say get messing the jar up I've put a little yoghurt pot at the bottom S slipped a, a little yoghurt pot in and then it's just a matter of carefully bending these wires back and taping them up and then putting your armature into straight into vacuum chamber put the top on and then pull a vacuum which I've used my compressor which I showed you in my last video so I did that and I did it three times. I pulled a vacuum, then back to atmos atmospheric pressure, then another vacuum and so on till I'd done three three vacuums. And on the third or fourth vacuum I just left the armature in the jar under under a vacuum for I don't know, probably half an hour till it had more or less dried, because it's quick drying this. Um, and I've got to say when it were under vacuum you could see all the air pulling out of the armature the, all the varnish was bubbling up and uh, it, it pulled all the air out I'm not going to say 100% because I could only get a 96% vacuum with this but I've got to say I think it did, it did a good job then what, what I did, I let the varnish, although it were dry, I let it harden off overnight. And then uh, the following day, I coated it in epoxy resin. Now, there's different types of epoxy resin, there's different setting times. And I, I could have bought some epoxy resin that, resin that gives you about 30 minutes to work with. But I didn't really want 30 minutes um, because obviously while that resin's on on the actual armature, you've got to be careful it's not all sliding around and and wanting to slide off in a big lump. So I used this rapid set epoxy resin, which sets in about five or six minutes. Now I know it doesn't sound long, five or six minutes, but I've tried it and, I, and it was pretty successful. What I did, I got a stiff brush. I used a stiff brush this time. I mixed, I mixed um, a, a quarter of this pack up, and uh, as quick as I could, I brushed it on into all the corners and everywhere till I covered the whole armature, and then. That took a couple of minutes and then I put it back in the uh, vacuum chamber 
and pulled another vacuum and then that pulled all the air out of the epoxy I did that again two or three vacuums and by the fourth vacuum the resin had gone off it, it don't fully set though for about 16 hours but it had gone off enough to touch so uh, that's where I'm up to with armature I've let this set overnight again as, and as you can see it's, it's rock solid so there we are so what I'm going to do now I'm just going to stop video I'm on my workbench at the moment I'm going to stop video move camera and then I'm going to just go quickly over my um, coil winding fixture so I can show you in a bit more detail with a few measurements on, on how I did it then if anybody is interested you know it might help uh, I nearly forgot to mention this um, I was explaining how I'd put the uh, the varnish and the epoxy on but I, I forgot to mention that before you do that when you've got your, your secondary winding connected to your multi strand and then onto your 0.8 wire to go into your slip ring once that's done you must put this um, glass fiber uh, woven tape on it's like it's like it's like a bandage to feel it but it's, it's glass fiber woven so all you have to do is before you put the varnish on you just go around this with a few turns and making sure all the time that you're covering the whole area of the secondary winding if you can see what I'm doing now and then basically you're putting it on like you would put a bandage on just make sure you're wrapping it all around the the entire circumference of the winding so sorry but I just missed that bit off uh, as I were mentioning putting the varnish on so I put this on first this glass fiber wo woven tape oh. so just bear with me and I'll see you over at my food lathe okay then uh, I'm over on my my food lathe now um, and what I was just going to continue doing like I said earlier I was just going to give you a quick review of this it, it's sort of a it's my prototype coil winding machine which I've used on my armature now you've seen it in action in plenty of my previous videos but I thought I'd just um, give you a quick idea of some of the sizes and the dimensions uh, I mean when I started the project I just drew a bit of a rough sketch out uh, as to how I wanted it to be so there's my sketch and then I'll just show you my dimensions which I've which I've done a little sketch of and you'll have to just uh, pause the video here to, to get to get uh, to copy them if you want to so I'll just run through this this little sketch I've done and I think it gives all the sizes that's important Have you got that? Okay, so uh, basically, it's just as I've explained before. It's just, it's just a, a wooden frame made out, made out of plywood. It's half inch plywood. Now in that frame, I've put. Um, I add. Let me just get my tape measure. and I've made this all from really scrap parts and parts I had in stock I had some 8 inch half inch Whitworth bolts so I've used those for the spindles and basically to keep the frame sturdy and there's one, one at the, two at the bottom one at the back and one at the front and one at the top and they hold the, the frame pretty rigid now they're doing two purposes then, they, they're keeping the frame secure and stable and they're also uh, doubling up as spindles 
for my parts that, you, that I've got inside. Uh, so on the back spindle is where my spool goes, as you've seen on my videos. And all I've done is made two nylon bushes, if you can see them. Now, it's, there's no point give, giving me, me giving you the size of them, because it all depends on the spool that you'll be using. And I suppose different wires comes on, come on different spools. And I'll probably have to make different bushes myself uh, in time. And then up up from here, we've, you've got this friction peg that I made. Now, it's 25 inch diameter, at the, not 25 inch, 25 millimeter diameter at the top and about 17 millimeter diameter at the bottom and roughly 65 millimeter long and it's tapered and I've split it in two and put felt in the middle and then when that's clamped round the wire you get your tension by as I've explained before going through that washer either tightening it downwards or loosening it upwards so that's the wedge now this arm that it fits in it's just a welding rod that comes off a nut braised a nut off a nut on the top spindle onto a, a washer and that washer is just an appropriate size to accept this tapered peg 36 diameter OD and about 18 millimeter diameter inside and then that that peg just fits into that washer to do my tensioning you've seen that on my videos that I've done bef prior to this And then up from that peg, I've got a, a nylon pulley. Now, that nylon pulley, I, I already had a, a couple in stock. I'm saying it's a pulley, but it's not a V-shaped pulley. It's got a, a radius in the in the root at the root diameter, and it's two inch diameter the overall. And what I've done, I've made a bush to fit on these half inch width. width uh, bolts that I've used as spindles and it just spins freely on that spindle and then to tension it up or detension it I've just put locking nuts on half inch width with locking nuts so that's them two back spindles dealt with now this front spindle I've got it able to move in two planes left or right or be able to be tilt backward or forward and it's a copper tube, 8mm eight mil, eight mil copper tube just appropriately with a compression fitting on here and an adapter in the front to take me tips where the wire comes through and they just screw into the front uh, so that's that uh, I think I've just said it's half inch plywood and then the plate on me tool post is a, a bit of scrap aluminium I had uh, and the bottom of the frame is, is L shaped to fit onto the back of this aluminium with four screws and you've just got to make sure that your aluminium slides under your tailstock and that you don't get too far out here where it will run into your armature once it's in, in the lathe when it's feeding in so I think I've put that dimension on that on that chart anyway that I've done. Uh, I think that's it really. Oh, and I've just used some uh, aluminium angle iron on, on two sides just to hold, hold it all together. So that's where it is. Uh, I just thought I'd, I'd, l I'd let you have dimensions of that in case anybody's interested and wants to, and wants to have, a, have a go at making it. Uh, if you've not got a Myford lathe, obviously most lathes are basically the same. I'm sure it could be adapted to fit any other type of lathe. Um, you just have to make sure that it's going to fit up the stock and, and it's going to be secure enough to, to hold everything. I'm sure that's adaptable quite easily. Um, I'm not going to 
I'm not going to waffle on because I think, I think I've covered everything. I've shown you in my past video how I did my counting mechanism. So you can pick up on that on that on one of them other parts. Uh, so I'll sign off for now and in my next video in my next video I'm gonna I'm just gonna quickly go through all the materials I used to do this rewind. I'm I'm gonna tell you the quantities which I bought and how much I bought them for and and uh, where I got them from. So that if anybody were interested in having a go, you'd have an idea of what you need and how much it's going to cost. And it didn't cost me a lot of money at all to do it. So I'll do that in my next video. So I'll sign off for now and catch you later. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.